I've been there. I fell. I went against everything I stood for. I sold out. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and I'm not doing it again. Period. I want to thank Bizzle for joining us. Um, with the first of our Uvu version of the e Equals MC Squared series as a part of ProfessU.com. We want to thank you first and foremost for participating in this with us today, uh, Brother Bizzle. We just wanted to ask you a few questions uh, regarding your journey and what's inspired you. And we want to let Dr. John Hamilton begin. My first question to you, Brother, is um, who is Mark Felder, a.k.a. Bizzle? Mark Felder, a.k.a. Bizzle, is... Uh really just a, a father a, a child of god seeking seeking god like every other christian um from a da found, foundational standpoint knowing that you are from los angeles originally from los angeles and now you're in houston texas correct yeah so who were some of your musical influences man my my, my, my biggest my musical, musical influence was two five i used to listen to everybody from jay-z ti kanye big you know what I'm saying? Uh, Bone Thugs, like, I, I had so many different cats that I listened to. Um, I was just a hip hop head in general. Media got us aiming to be American gangsters. Feeling to tell us ain't no happy ending for gangsters. They dead or in jail, but it's never too late for change. You can be the one that paved the way if you ain't afraid. Where did the name Bizzle originate? Man, on my, on my, on, when, I, when I was on the other end, when I wasn't doing it for the Lord, they called me Playboy. Okay. Um, and then it went from Playboy to Play Bizzle, and then cats just started calling me Bizzle. Uh, how do you feel about the, the genre or the category of Christian rap? Honestly, personally, I don't mind it um, because I'm a Christian. It's, it's unfair the way that Christian rap is the only category that gets separated by content. And mm -hmm. what you rap about, and as a Christian rapper, um, I, I don't mind wearing the title because I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian everything. Christian rappers had like a, a, a cornball type of stigma for for a while. You know what I'm saying? When I, I got saved, I thought it was corn. You know what I'm saying? I had, <laughs> had to find cats that I can identify with. Exactly. So rather than me saying I'm not a Christian rapper because I don't want I people don't to think I'm corny, corny, I want to wear I, I, I wear it and, and, and say, look. Christian rap is not corny, period. This mm -hmm. is still Christian rap. I'm rapping about the streets, but it's still Christian rap. I'm just rapping from a Christ-like mm -hmm. perspective. Good against evil. The devil got your head confused. Fighting an insignificant war between red and blue. Shifting gears just a, a little bit. And what do you feel that education's role is in today's entertainment industry? And do you think it even has a place? I mean, I mean it, it should play a major role. Um, because you, you, we've all heard so many for us to keep our hands or, or on the industry, and we know what's going on. We hear so many stories about bankers, mm -hmm. about people getting robbed, about people trying to get out their contracts. So when you, when, yeah. when you, when someone paints a picture of something that's easy to do, oh yeah, man, I just got out of jail last week. I got a record deal this week. And makes it and make it look like it's just so easy to attain. You end up going there not prepared because you're not educated uh, for where you're about to go. You know what I'm saying? The rap game is presented like a an an alternative to education when they should go hand in hand. Like I don't mm -hmm. have to get my education. I'm gonna rap, and that's how I was thinking. You know what I'm saying? Um, but once you get in it, you realize that you have to keep you have to try to employ so many people to do these the things that you don't know how to do because you can take the time to learn. Your attorney got educated and your manager had to get educated. Yeah. And these people, you know what I'm saying? So the education is needed. Now, whether you want to get it or pay somebody else to attain the knowledge is definitely a crucial thing in, in the industry. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. So did you always see yourself as as part of hip hop? You just knew that that was going to be your passion yeah. that, or whether okay. some other path that you were going to take? Now, when I was, I mean, when I was little, I was doing sports, but I knew, like, I was writing rap. I've been writing rap since I was eight, you know what I mean, crayon. Okay. Like, right. so I came up, like, that was my dream. Some of us get the opportunity to have this platform. And coming, you know, being African-American, it's like you have a people that were formerly, uh, formerly enslaved, 
and, and, and bondage, uneducated. Like, you get this platform where you can talk to a million people, what are you going to tell them? And now that's how I approach you. Hustling wasn't the plan, I know. Mother was struggling, pops wasn't a man, I know. But even though your father was not home, he left, but he's not gone. You still got a father seated on the most high throne. When you now you talk about this, the, the platform that you have, and a lot of entertainers have this platform. And we know we just finished up, wrapped up with the Grammys. And I know a lot of entertainers always thank God, you know, when they're accepting that award. And it's clear that you know you have a clear message, you know, within your music, and you have this calling through your music. So, what message would you give to a young male or female who's itching to get into the music industry? First and foremost, be you, and I, and I say that because I was trying to be other people when I can't when I when I was trying to get on it first. Probably another question we already would know the answer to. But what role does family play in your everyday life and in your career? Oh, man. Uh, man. I mean, I mean family, family plays, plays, it plays such a big, such part, a big because part because, one, one just, just, just being just in everyday, being everyday life, life, I have to learn how to balance a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think it's a, it's a problem. One, most of the time we don't have fathers in the household. But now that I'm a, I'm a father who's in the household, I need, I need to learn how to balance my time and attention between the music mm -hmm. you know just ministry in general mm -hmm. then my wife and my children being a husband and being a father what role did education play in your life and what kind of student were you during school time no i was <laughs> i was i was i was a bad student man i was uh you know i talked a lot in class i got a slight case of add so my focus was never on point. I wrote raps in class all the time. So I was I was a smart kid, but lazy kid at the same time. And I knew what to do to get by. I stopped taking my education for granted. So when I got into college, you know, because I did, I wasn't sure if I could get into one. I, I, I ended up going to Prairie View A and M. So I ended up I dropping ended up out. out. Mm -hmm. And why I dropped out was, and and hopefully this is not the case for. Um, a lot of people who, like me, probably don't have the bread. Like, I, I got financial aid. My best friend, who's my roommate, which is now he's making good money. Like, I had to, I start realizing my wife, she stayed in school. around when it, once, it, once it gets around graduation time, you start feeling like you messed up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> right, right, right. it, it, yeah. it, 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 graduation it, it, seems so far away, away. Yeah. when you're a freshman you in college. college. But then when, you start, when people start graduating and you would have been graduating at that time, you like, dang, now my wife, she working for the Houston Rockets. My my homeboy, he working, he making over a hundred thousand dollars a year. I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, mm -hmm. I trip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I said, like we I present said, we present, present rap, rap as, rap, as, an, as an alternative to too. education rather than to be accompanied by education. Um but Great, some of these artists that go to school like like I, I'm down here in Houston, so I know a couple years ago Lil Wayne was going down to U of H. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then you hear right. about uh, Two Chains, and then you hear about like these cats who who really educate. And, and I and I thank y'all. Like I'm glad that y'all actually are encouraging education and shining light on it because it needs to be like you cannot have one without the other. Like if you have success without education, it's probably going to be a short-lived success. This is absolutely what we stand for. You know, uh, I can't say it any better than that. How important is it for or your peers that's in the game to be role models? I mean, it's. Mo I, I've heard people when I was a, a, a kid coming up. I, I heard people use the term all the time that you know I ain't no role model. I ain't no. But mm -hmm. it's like just saying that you're not a role model will not stop children from following you. <laughs> they look up to you. Right. You know what culture, culture we come from. from. You know fathers are not in the households like that. Mm -hmm. So as right. far as a male to look up to, the hip-hop game is dominated by males. And they present themselves as right. strong males to follow. You know what I'm saying? And they're mm -hmm. successful. Yeah. And you see them on yeah. TV, they have what you want to have. And usually when you see someone that has what you want to have, you try to duplicate what they did to get there. And and a lot of, I've heard artists say, well, I don't let my children, my kids listen to my music. So that tells us mm -hmm. that you know that there's a difference. I mean, you, you, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So then the question you have to ask yourself is, it, why is it cool that 
a million other kids, a million other people's kids listen to my music. A large portion of this interview happening, or reason that it did happen is because of a personal connection that we have together, which is Gene Thornton, also known now as No oh, Malice. Malice. That's right, so I just wanted to see if you could share with us maybe why and how you guys connected, because of course one of the things that really raised our eyebrows was your latest video um, that you've done with him, Soldier, which is absolutely fantastic as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I think that, you know, it's definitely a message along with something that you know, again, does not need to be bounded by a Christian rap kind of category. It's just good hip hop music. I show enough, needed me some relief. I ain't need a Jesus peace. I needed Jesus peace. What are the requirements for you to, to really pair up with someone else to collaborate with? I'm not opposed, like, it, 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 cause it, it, you can look at it different ways. I'm not opposed to hopping on a, a, a record with somebody from what we, what we would call the secular rap, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, side. But what I won't do is co-sign somebody right, somebody's righteousness when they're not. That's, that's not that's what not they, represent. they represent. That's, that's not what they live out. I almost come to an end to this interview. You know, what do you say out there to those, to those young cats or you know, women that want to go out? And they want to get into this particular genre. What do you say to them? The thing is that to just focus on God, like really get that relationship. And as your heart starts changing, the Bible says that out of abundance. Uh, out of the abundance of the heart, you know what I'm saying, the mouth speaks. But what goes in is gonna come out. So mm -hmm. when you're filling yourself up with all this, you know, the, the bang, bang, shoot him, kill him, kill you, when you freestyle, yeah, it's easier to write, but when you freestyle, you right. gonna freestyle what you, right. you know, what you take in. I, I, I think we, we need to do a lot better with the platform. Like the platform is there. I think we need to look at it, stop looking at it as just a means to make money. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm tripping, no. Maybe I'm seeing things. And maybe I see some things. Like a need to change. Yeah, this has been great. This has been great, man. And this uh, is obvious that you are going to be part of a larger mission here that's going on as far as really just putting some truth out there. And that's what we all about. You know what Profess you is really sharing what the truth is. Again, I think one of the things that you said earlier that really stands out is the fact that if you are in school, rap about that. I think that, that type of message is something that needs to be heard and especially as someone of your caliber, um, it just holds you know a little more weight um, than when some other people say it. So we really appreciate you uh, participating in this with us today and uh, we want to congratulate you on all that you've done thus far and for everything that's to come. That's oh, right. Oh man, thank you all.